But yeah, we got a game for you boys. Just going to have time for a best of three. Because I have to go catch a flight in about 30 or 35 minutes. But that'll be more than fine. For a stream debut for um, a player I've been meaning to have on stream for a while now. Uh, that is... I don't know how how he wants his name to be pronounced. Is it Pokex? Is it P-O-Q-X? He's uh, a Russian player and he does stream on Twitch. So any of you Russian-speaking gentlemen and women, children, be sure to head over there and uh, check out his stream because he has been streaming on Twitch. Killer number seven is going to be his opponent. He does also stream on Twitch. So be sure to give him some love also. It is a regular 1v1. I know we've been doing a lot of pentathlons, but just a regular 1v1 today. Killer number seven, who's played on stream before. He's won series on stream. He's also lost some series against good players on stream before. He's proven to be a pretty solid player at the highest level. And like I said, this this season, I think in RLS, in RLRS, he was teamed up. Um, let me make sure I get this right. With Stocky. And who was their third? Somebody in chat, help me out here. Killer, Stocky, and who was their third? I've totally blanked on that. Uh, I should know. But they finished second in the RLRS. I oh, forget to say. How are their bots on? But for me, some of the bots have got a lot more personality than other ones, and I would love it if you could choose what bots are against the, the other bots. I would even go as far as to cast an entire tournament of best of one knockout just to see which bot is the best. That's something I would love to do. So maybe in the future, that's a feature that we're going to be able to have available to us. But now it's a big test. Pockex, he's a uh, regular in the top 100 leaderboard. Oh, yeah. Why have I still got the Metsa versus Ocelon score on? That is a good point. Very, very good observation. Uh, this is, of course, game one. This is why I am uh, a professional streamer, everybody. But look, I, I am going to get the capitalization right for Pock X. There you go. Isn't that impressive? And before anybody wonders why it's nil-nil, uh, that's just because this is only the score for the series, not for the goals. You're, you can already see that yourselves. Their number seven is off to a good start. Pockex is going to be very careful. Killer is an extremely aggressive player. He loves challenging as early as possible. This is just a best of three. I've got I've got time to cast a best of five. I'm going to be going to catch a flight in about 30 minutes, and I don't want to push this too or cut this too close to that time. But this will be a nervous debut, I'm sure, for Pockex. I'm going to call him Pockex rather than Poqx. If he, if, there, if if there wasn't for if there was only three, I think three is the most amount of letters that I would say as a, you know, as a abbreviation, like a, a PQX or something. POQX? I don't know, POCX. He's, yeah, he finished off several, I think, uh, well into the top 100 last season. So did killer number seven. So it should be a really close match. So far, so good for killer. He's been getting the exact type of game that he likes to play, which is attack, attack, attack. Early challenge, early shots, just play as aggressive as possible. This is honestly some of the best I've seen him play. Off to a flying start. Pockex is going to have to step up his speed if he wants to keep up with Killer here. Did I say, by the way, Days T 92 Thanks for the 13 months. I think I got distracted. I forgot to say thanks for that. I do appreciate that. Incredibly long time to be subscribed for. So welcome back. But is Pockex going to be able to get his first goal? That really, I think, is all he needs right now to stabilize his confidence because he's going to be coming in here quite nervous. First time on stream against a proven competitor. A Sarp veteran. This man has been playing Rocket League games for a long, long time. There's the early challenge and this time Pockex does read it. We knew that this was going to be something Killer would be doing more than often. Grabs the boost. Commits really hard to the challenge there. Didn't fake it all. Didn't let go of boost at all. So I like from Killer that he didn't change his mind. Didn't doubt himself that entire time. But we see the weakness of going for only aggressive challenges. As that is if your opponent can flick the ball early, if you can control it, and then pop it, then um, it's easily going to be an outplay. I'm sure now that Pockex has got his first goal, he's going to be feeling a lot better. It takes a little bit too long to control the ball there, though, before going for the outplay. That's a great shot by Killer. Pockex not ready for it. He didn't expect the shot to be coming at him so quickly here. Killer lobbing it in a position that Pockex expected him to drill it at the bottom corner near post. That was a really, really surprisingly high shot by Killer from that position. Pockex was expecting a low shot, I'm sure. 
early flick is working again. Now, Killer is going to have to change something. His early challenges are starting to become quite susceptible to getting outplayed. This is a man that Killer is against who has given Scrub Kill at some trouble on his stream in the past in the recent times. Good save there. And another chance is opening up. Killer, not a good clear. Pokex decides to catch it and pop it. There's the aerial bump. We're seeing this become more and more prevalent in the current metagame in 1v1. Great play. High pop. He knows that Killer has to jump and stop this from reaching his goal. Didn't want to, Killer didn't want to give Pokex time to recover and jump and put that into the air a second time. But... In jumping himself, he opened himself up to getting bumped out of the way. Here comes another bump. It's going to work, and this is wide open. The power is also there. Pokex is within two. It really does seem that ever since he scored that first goal, his confidence has improved sevenfold. He's made a good adaptation to his own ball carrying as well, which is noteworthy. It's important if your opponent is throwing in early challenges and consistently rushing you that you just start to control the ball as fast as possible and then flick it as fast as possible. Don't even look to see if it's a fake challenge. If the past, you know, two or three challenges... Oh, good shot, by the way. But if the past two or three challenges have all been rush challenges, just get it on top of your car and flick it immediately before you... You don't even have to look and see what your opponent's doing in case the ball is obscuring their line of approach at all two goals in it. This is turning into a close game. The likes of which we were hoping for. Failed 180 backflip flick and Pocket is looking for the demo. That might be a misplay. He looked for a bump or a demo here. Onto Killer. He was just weighing up the option. He saw him there lining it up. Then it was too late when he realized it wasn't on the cards. He was not able to turn around and save the long shot. It was back in, I believe, season two when Killer number 7 first teamed up with Freaky and Pondex that he really started to look like a world-class player again. He's not been able to reach an RLCS land yet. He's come close a few times. Group stage RLCS regular. Uh, it's going to be pretty rough to get back in. I think the first round of the promotion tournament for Killer and his team, I think it's Frags their third. I didn't see if chat uh, told me the answer to that question. I'm sure you did. But yeah, their third is Frag. It's Killer... Stocky and Frag, formerly of Reason Gaming, who are making up the Juicy Kids, probably the weirdest named team that I've ever seen. There's his logo, for those of you who are not watching on mobile. Good fake air dribble, but Killer is equal to it. Okay, so we'd have had to do a little bit more than just dropping the ball in front of Killer's net to get that to go in. But the first game that these guys are going to have to play, or Killer is going to have to play against, uh, in the promotion tournament is current world champions Envy. Well, they're soon not to be world champions because they failed to even make the playoffs for RLCS Season 4. Falling to 7th place. But that's another own goal. Phenomenal by Killer number 7. <laughs> that's one of the best own goals I've seen in a while as he comes off the ceiling and he's only looking to pick up the boost. Too late does he realize that he's in fact hit the ball at his own net. And then panics even more. Ends up tapping it in as well. That is a welcome own goal for Pokex. Because he needed something. He was down by four in the final 40 seconds. Killer number seven is giving him a way back into the game. Still a ways to go though for the debutant. I'm not sure what the Russian Rocket League uh, community is like. I'm really not sure. I've not looked at my own YouTube numbers to see what percentage of viewership comes from Russia. I'm sure that there's some there. I'm not sure uh, of any other Russian players. So again, I'm sure that they are out there in the top 100. Maybe Twitch chat can help out. Maybe somebody in Twitch right now is uh, is from Russia. This is not going to be a win in game one. It's beyond recovering. It is, uh, it is Pokex's first time on stream. Yes, it is indeed. Six to nine in his debut barring another kickoff goal which it looks like we might even see Killer has the possession it's going to drop though that is game one going to Killer however I could certainly see uh, with, with how that first match developed 
if Park X can take game two, I would uh, expect him to then go on and take game three as well because strategically he's had the dribble out plays on Killer a few times and Killer's been relying mostly on unforced errors from Park X to score his own goals. Uh, Park X needs to just be a little bit more careful, not go for boost over the ball as much as he has been. And he's also been a couple of saves that I mean, it might be down to nerves. It might just be down to the shot quality that Killer has been using. But this is game two. Let's see how it goes. Killer has got the speed in the midfield. Has he got the control? Yes, he does. And he's going to slot it in the bottom corner for 1 0. Hawkex tries to take a leaf out of Killer's book there and challenge early. Does not work, though. Killer spotted him a mile away. It was not a goal side line that Pockets was taking. That's worth mentioning. If you're going to make an early challenge, it's smart to come from between your goal and the ball. Because then even if the shot does go on target, you're going to save it a good bit of the time. Killer number seven with a cheeky infield dribble. That's going to be 2-0. Pockets has to be careful. Starting to struggle in the midfield against Killer. This time, he must have expected Killer to continue dribbling down the wall or down the line, but that opened himself up to a really, really basic infield dribble by Killer, who did control the ball quickly, but still, unforced setters are creeping in, and is this another one? The ball dangerously close to 3-0. Killer again refuses to back down. There's the early flick, and again, this is proving to be extremely potent. Whenever Bokex can control the ball and just flick it immediately, He's consistently out playing Killer in the midfield now, but defensive weaknesses have yet to be shored up by the newcomer. Kickoff goal lacks power. However, Killer number seven's first touch is lacking as well. He's in a bit of an awkward spot here. Looks like he has escaped it. Pockex unable to capitalize on the boost advantage which he had. Another early flick. This should be easier for Killer to save. But he doesn't get it clear. And look at the danger of defending these flicks high above your net. So even if you do recover relatively fast, Pockex had already moved into that corner, predicting the clear path. Good center ball to himself. He recovered very quickly as well for the finish. We're all tied up. A killer might be about to change that. And he does. Pockex could not make up his mind if he wanted to go for the boost or not. And he just took a wide line. Failing to grab the boost in the process. Had he gone straight back to goal there, he may have had it. This killer shot wasn't that powerful. I see a couple of people asking about the playoff scenarios coming up, coming up this weekend. It is NRG versus Rogue in America. Winner goes to LAN. And I've uh, picked NRG as the favorite for that one. And of course, Ghost versus FlyQuest on the other side. That's a ghost all the way for me. I doubt, I doubt that's going to be a close series, but you never know. It is playoffs and it's single elimination. So it could go either way, I guess. More often than uh, than a double elimination tournament. In Europe, it's flip side versus Gale Force, and I have to give it to Gale Force based on the recent consistency. And then you got Excel versus Mocket, a matchup that we just saw in the final week of league play with Mocket looking really good. So I'd have to give it to Mocket again. So every single game going with seeding, in my opinion. Probably the two that are most likely not to go with seeding would be uh, flip side. Just popping off in playoffs. It's happened before. And perhaps um, Rogue upsetting NRG. I, I don't think it's likely, though. I really don't think it's likely. NRG have been best team in North America for so long. It really is difficult to see them. It's difficult to see uh, RLCS Grand Final that doesn't have them included. It really is. Yeah, the, the EU playoff is so stacked, it's crazy. Good shot by Pockets. Killer number seven was always second best after getting demoed here. And he did not spawn on the uh, same side of the field as Pockets did. Take the ball too. Took that little bit longer to position himself in the shadowing position. This is, I think, the first lead that Pockets has had all series. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that is the first time he's been ahead this entire series. It took almost what, seven and a half minutes to happen? He's starting to get it together defensively. 
But that's a couple of very weak shots back to back. Opens up the chance for Killer to take the ball. Bit of a waste still by Killer, it has to be said. He tried to go for another long shot. That did work for him last game when Pokex overstayed his welcome. Killer's got to start mixing it up. He's been playing for the early shots almost every single possession that he's had. And Pokex now knows that that is what's coming. And he started to mix up his defense accordingly. But now Killer with the outplay. He's got the speed when he needs it. Good control as well to find the open net. And quickly. Didn't even give Pokex close to a chance of recovering inside to save this. Five all. It is, of course, paramount that Pokex wins this game. This is double match point killer number seven at the moment. And of course, I've never seen these guys play. The only uh, matchups that I've seen Pokex play is against, I think I've seen him play against Flores before, I've seen him play against Ocelon, I've seen him play against Scrub, and all three of those matchups I saw on uh, the respective opponent's streams. I didn't see any of those matchups on Pokex's stream himself. Killer number seven is really going for this, and he's done well. Oh my word, what a 50-50. This was brave from killer number seven. He's off the wall with not enough boost to go for the ball and then recover should he lose that 50-50, but that wasn't what he was thinking about. All he cared about was getting as good a hitbox as he could coming off the back wall. Pockex certainly taken by surprise there. As nobody really does that in 1v1. There's the demo by Killer. Is this a revenge goal? It should be. The control is there, but he might have overhit this, and he has. Pockex is a little bit unfortunate. He spawned on the wrong side to get the easy interception. He does intercept, though. Early shot, but it's lacking power. Pockex has not found power from the midfield for large portions of this game. Gets the pinch, and he misses on the rebound. Or the aerial, I should say. Because the ball had yet to hit the back wall. 40 seconds. Pockex on the brink. He is so close to tying this up, but he should be able to. Composure is good. And again, I've said all throughout this series, early control and an early flick is all he needs to take out killer, seven, killer number seven from the game. Does he have the consistency? Does he have the guts to close the deal, though? For now, killer number seven continues to pile on the pressure. This is so close. Pockex is within reach, but he just can't seem to get a lead and hold on to it for very long. The pressure from the more experienced German player is proving to be valuable. And this is great for killer number seven. He's got boost. He's got the ball in Pockex's half. And he's got another shot and he takes it. Two goal lead. Pockex needs a kickoff goal here. Or at least a really, really dominant possession immediately after this kickoff happens. This is a tough spot for anybody. Kickoff does go into his possession, but he's going to have to dribble Killer yet again. And Killer number seven doesn't even let it develop for half a second. Slams Pockex, and that is going to be the game. Another six to nine. Great play by Killer at the end there. He knew that Pockex was going to try and control the ball. There was no thought of Pockex taking that across his own goal line. He needed to control the ball right there and then. Killer at number seven read that slow play, intercepted it before it could happen. And that is RIP Pockex on his stream debut. Killer number seven shuts him down with a great performance. Great aggression. And the more consistent out of the two in terms of goalkeeping. Although Pockex did manage to get a couple of goals from backing Killer into his own goal. And then uh, intercepting Killer number seven saves and clears. 2-0 though, GG's. It's good to see Killer number seven still looking pretty solid in 1v1. I'm sure he's been focusing primarily on 3v3 like the majority of pro players have been, especially with the RLRS happening this season for him. Still a formidable, formidable opponent, though, on his day. I could certainly see, uh, with, with how that first match developed, if Pockex can take game two, I would uh, expect him to then go on and take game three as well because strategically... He's had the dribble out plays on Killer a few times. And Killer's been relying mostly on unforced errors from Pockex to score his own goals. Uh, Pockex needs to just be a little bit more careful, not go for boost over the ball as much as he has been. 
And he's also beaten a couple of saves. I mean, it might be down to nerves. It might just be down to the shot quality that Killer has been using. But this is game two. Let's see how it goes. Killer has got the speed in the midfield. Has he got the control? Yes, he does. And he's going to slot it in the bottom corner for 1-0. Hawkex tries to take a leaf out of Killer's book there and challenge early. Does not work, though. Killer spotted him a mile away. It was not a goal side line that Pockets was taking. That's worth mentioning. If you're going to make an early challenge, it's smart to come from between your goal and the ball. Because then even if the shot does go on target, you're going to save it a good bit of the time. Killer number seven with a cheeky infield dribble. That's going to be 2-0. Pockets has to be careful. Starting to struggle in the midfield against Killer. This time, he must have expected Killer to continue dribbling down the wall or down the line, but that opened himself up to a really, really basic infield dribble by Killer, who did control the ball quickly, but still, unforced errors are creeping in, and is this another one? The ball dangerously close to 3-0. Killer again refuses to back down. There's the early flick, and again, this is proving to be extremely potent. Whenever Bokex can control the ball and just flick it immediately, He's consistently out playing Killer in the midfield now, but defensive weaknesses have yet to be shored up by the newcomer. Kickoff goal lacks power. However, Killer number seven's first touch is lacking as well. He's in a bit of an awkward spot here. Looks like he has escaped it. Pockex unable to capitalize on the boost advantage which he had. Another early flick. This should be easier for Killer to save. But he doesn't get it clear. And look at the danger of defending these flicks high above your net. So even if you do recover relatively fast, Pockex had already moved into that corner, predicting the clear path. Good center ball to himself. He recovered very quickly as well for the finish. We're all tied up. A killer might be about to change that. And he does. Pockex could not make up his mind if he wanted to go for the boost or not. And he just took a wide line failing to grab the boost in the process. Had he gone straight back to goal there, he may have had it. This killer shot wasn't that powerful. I see a couple of people asking about the playoff scenarios coming up, coming up this weekend. It is NRG versus Rogue in America. Winner goes to LAN. And I've uh, picked NRG as the favorite for that one. And of course, Ghost versus FlyQuest on the other side. That's a ghost all the way for me. I doubt, I doubt that's gonna be a close series, but you never know, it is playoffs and it's single elimination. So it could go either way, I guess. More often than uh, than a double elimination tournament. In Europe, it's flip side versus Gale Force, and I have to give it to Gale Force based on the recent consistency. And then you got Excel versus Mocket, a matchup that we just saw in the final week of league play with Mocket looking really good. So I'd have to give it to Mocket again. So every single game going with seeding, in my opinion. Probably the two that are most likely not to go with seeding would be uh, flip side. Just popping off in playoffs. It's happened before. And perhaps um, Rogue upsetting NRG. I, I don't think it's likely, though. I really don't think it's likely. NRG have been best team in North America for so long. It really is difficult to see them. It's difficult to see uh, RLCS Grand Final that doesn't have them included. It really is. Yeah, the, the EU playoff is so stacked, it's crazy. Good shot by Pockets. Killer number seven was always second best after getting demoed here. And he did not spawn on the uh, same side of the field as Pockets did. Take the ball too. Took that little bit longer to position himself in the shadowing position. This is, I think, the first lead that Pockets has had all series. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that is the first time he's been ahead this entire series. It took almost what, seven and a half minutes to happen? He's starting to get it together defensively. But that's a couple of very weak shots back to back. Opens up the chance for Killer to take the ball. Bit of a waste though by Killer, it has to be said. He tried to go for another long shot. That did work for him last game when Pockex overstayed his welcome. Killer's got to start mixing it up. He's been playing for the early shots 
almost every single possession that he's had. And Pokex now knows that that is what's coming. And he started to mix up his defense accordingly. But now Killer with the outplay. He's got the speed when he needs it. Good control as well to find the open net. And quickly. Didn't even give Pokex close to a chance of recovering in time to save this. 5 all. It is, of course, paramount that Pokex wins this game. This is double match point killer number seven at the moment. And of course, I've never seen these guys play. The only uh, matchups that I've seen Pokex play is against, I think I've seen him play against Flores before, I've seen him play against Ocelon, I've seen him play against Scrub, and all three of those matchups I saw on uh, the respective opponent's streams. I didn't see any of those matchups on Pokex's stream himself. Killer number seven is really going for this, and he's done well. Oh my word, what a 50-50. This was brave from killer number seven. He's off the wall with not enough boost to go for the ball and then recover should he lose that 50-50, but that wasn't what he was thinking about. All he cared about was getting as good a hitbox as he could coming off the back wall. Pokex certainly taken by surprise there. As nobody really does that in 1v1. There's the demo by Killer. Is this a revenge goal? It should be. The control is there, but he might have overhit this, and he has. Pokex is a little bit unfortunate. He spawned on the wrong side to get the easy interception. He does intercept, though. Early shot, but it's lacking power. Pokex has not found power from the midfield for large portions of this game. Gets the pinch, and he misses on the rebound. Or the aerial, I should say. Because the ball had yet to hit the back wall. 40 seconds. Pokex on the brink. He is so close to tying this up, but he should be able to. Composure is good. And again, I've said all throughout this series, early control and an early flick is all he needs to take out killer, seven, killer number seven from the game. Does he have the consistency? Does he have the guts to close the deal, though? For now, killer number seven continues to pile on the pressure. This is so close. Pokex is within reach, but he just can't seem to get a lead and hold on to it for very long. The pressure from the more experienced German player is proving to be valuable. And this is great for killer number seven. He's got boost. He's got the ball in Pokex's half. And he's got another shot and he takes it. Two goal lead. Pokex needs a kickoff goal here. Or at least a really, really dominant possession immediately after this kickoff happens. This is a tough spot for anybody. Kickoff does go into his possession, but he's going to have to dribble Killer yet again. And Killer number seven doesn't even let it develop for half a second. Slams Pokex, and that is going to be the game. Another six to nine. Great play by Killer at the end there. He knew that Pokex was going to try and control the ball. There was no thought of Pokex taking that across his own goal line. He needed to control the ball right there and then. Killer at number seven read that slow play, intercepted it before it could happen. And that is RIP Pokex on his stream debut. Killer number seven shuts him down with a great performance. Great aggression. And the more consistent out of the two in terms of goalkeeping. Although Pokex did manage to get a couple of goals from backing Killer into his own goal. And then uh, intercepting Killer number seven saves and clears. 2-0 though. GG's. It's good to see Killer number seven still looking pretty solid in 1v1. I'm sure he's been focusing primarily on 3v3 like the majority of pro players have been, especially with the RLRS happening this season for him. Still a formidable, formidable opponent, though, on his day.